Hey guys, I'm back with another quick and easy Photoshop tutorial. This tutorial is going to be all about photo retouching. And this is a great way to make your photos look a little bit more professional. You don't need an expensive camera or fancy equipment to have nice looking crisp professional photos. So the photo I'm using for this tutorial is a photo of my friend Erin that we shot for her new website, PilatesOfPalmBeach.com. And as you can see, it was a beautiful day here in South Florida. It looks great, but we do have this guy in the background kind of ruining our shot. So what we're going to do before we decide to take him out is I'm going to make a copy of my background layer. And this is always a smart thing to do so that you have an original untouched copy of your work because the last thing you want to do is do all your work and then realize you messed up and suddenly you don't have an original of the work and you have to start all over again. So let's zoom into our little guy and what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our tools palette and select the clone stamp tool and the keyboard shortcut for that tool is S. And what you have is a brush, but when you push the alternate key on a PC or the option key on a Mac, your brush turns into this crosshair. And what that is used for is to sample an area, which you're then going to use to cover up the sky. So let's make sure that all of our uh, layers are being sampled. We're going to make a new layer. And sampling all layers means that we're going to sample everything that's here and put it on this new layer. So I'm going to sample the ocean space next to this little guy, and then I'm going to cover him up. Oh. Sorry about that, I accidentally sampled from the sky a little bit. So you want to change that size of your brush, otherwise you're going to accidentally sample areas that you don't want to. So the trick here is to make sure that you sample from a variety of spots, you keep changing your brush size and moving around otherwise it's going to look really crunchy and it's going to be very obvious that something was photoshopped you also want to make sure even though i'm sampling from different spots i'm continuing this pattern i'm not sampling from up here where it's dark blue i'm not sampling from way down here i'm sampling in the same general vicinity so that it looks natural so once again i'm going to sample from right here I'm going to change the size of my brush. I'm going to keep picking different areas. And then I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to push S, which is going to give me my clone stamp tool. Once again, I'm just going to continue sampling in this little straight line. And as you can see, you might even want to sample a little bit from the from the sand, which is only going to cover them up a little bit, but it just makes it look a little bit more real. So I'm just going to continue this wave like this. And you also want to make sure that your brush is has zero hardness. Otherwise, you're going to get a hard, solid line. And that is a dead giveaway that Photoshop was used. It's like a big no-no. So as you can see, there he is and there he isn't. OK, when we shot this, we actually chose a spot that was marked off for a volleyball court. That's why you see this line right here. So I'm going to use the <laughs> Zach technique as my dogs are fighting. Kaya and Phil, please stop. No matter what, they want to be the stars. Okay, so once again, I'm going to use the same technique. I'm going to sample from the sand. This is not rocket science. It's completely quick and painless. Here it's not as much of a big deal because it's like a solid color. So if you sample kind of in the same vicinity, it's okay. Oh, I keep forgetting what that shortcut is. It's S.
And because we've got that soft edge, you want to be careful here that I don't get it too much on her pants. I just pushed E, which is my eraser, and I'm going to clean up this little area right here. There we go. And I'm going to push S, which is back to my clone stamp tool. Alternate to select the area I'm sampling from. And click sample. And then cover up that line. And I'm also using my bracket tools right next to my return key to change the size of my brush. Once again, these little shortcuts will make your life so much easier. And for those of you who complain about a Mac only having one button, you've got a whole keyboard worth of shortcuts <laughs> that you should be using. Um, okay, so other than that, I think we look pretty good. The only other thing that I noticed is that, you know, I didn't use a tripod when I shot this and the sand kind of goes on an angle. It's really small, but I'm crazy. So I'm gonna use a guide. I just pulled one of these down from my ruler tool and I'm going to shift select the layer and this background layer and lock them together. My show transform tools is selected and that's why we've got these little highlighted corners which we can then use to rotate our picture and we're going to rotate it so that that line kind of lines up with our guide, which gives us a nicer straight image. So now I've got some extra space there. I'm just gonna use my crop tool to clean that up. And actually we could clone stamp it, but it's okay, we don't have to. Last thing I'm gonna do, we uh, kept the same wardrobe throughout our shoot which isn't a big deal but it would be nice to switch up some of the photos and perhaps change the color of her shirt to complement her website and it also makes it look like we did a lot more work and had a more involved and professional photo shoot so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my magnetic lasso tool and I'm going to select all around her shirt and I'm just running that lasso around the shirt. Ta-da, selected the shirt. In my layers palette, I'm gonna select selective color. And what that's gonna do is as you can see, we've got a mask here that only shows the shirt. And now we're going to adjust the colors in that mask. So. Her shirt is pink, so I'm gonna go to red, and you're just gonna move these sliders around until you get a color combination that you really like. I think that maybe I would do a more purple, like a deep purple kind of color because her website is maroon. And there's also a magenta in here because the shirt is pink. And I'm sure there's more of a science to this, but I don't use science. <laughs> I just move it around till I like what it looks like. You don't want it to get too crunchy or fake looking, so. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my original thing and make it more purple. Like I've said a million times before, I'm really OCD about this stuff, and I could sit here for half an hour playing with the color until I got it to look the right way, and then I probably still wouldn't be happy and I would continue to mess with it. Oh, there's more purple. See? I'm glad I kept going. Okay. Okay. Okay, enough, enough is enough. All right, so let's turn off my guides so you don't see that. And if you push tab, that makes all your windows disappear. Let's see a before. That's a before 
and after. Not bad.